Hi, this is a quick part two to my previous tutorial which I did in Illustrator where I showed you how to make a retro bottle cap badge design type of thing. Um, I'll provide a link for that one in the description below. Um, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to take that vector object into Photoshop and we'll be adding some quick easy effects to it and adding some texture to it to make it look more realistic. So yeah, let's get to it. So first off we'll just make a new document, just make it 400 by 400 pixels and then we'll come over and select a grey midtone for the background. Give me any colour you want, I just like using grey because it's pretty, pretty neutral. Then we'll want to paste in our vectors from the Illustrator file which we were working on previously. So just go over to Illustrator, we could copy all the vectors and come back into Photoshop and just paste them in. Once you paste them in, you'll get a little dialogs, dialog box that'll come up. It'll ask you to, or how you want to import the vectors into Photoshop. I like using smart objects because it retains all the vector information, so when you resize it, you don't lose it and that sort of thing. It's also helpful um, if you like want to make it bigger, it's not going to make it go blurry like you would if you paste it in using pixels. So we'll just use smart object for now. Once you paste it in, it's going to be still in its um, size edit mode, so you just come up and press the little tick button there and it'll allow you to carry on. So our next step will be to apply a drop shadow to this um, smart object here. That will just give it a bit more depth and help lift it off the page. So what you want to do is you want to come over to your vector smart object layer and just double click on a blank area. And this should bring up your layer style um, dialog box. So just go and hit a tick on Drop Shadow and just click on Drop Shadow and it'll bring up all your values here. Um, I think for now we'll just keep all these the same, I might bring these ones up a little bit just to extend the blur and the um, distance out. Yep, I think that looks good, we'll just hit OK. So that will apply the Drop Shadow and that effect will be permanently attached to, the, um, to that layer. So now we're going to add a bevel to the um, object here. That will just make it uh, pop up and look a lot a lot more 3D, just add a bit of um, highlights to the top and shadows to the bottom. The overall effect actually works very well. So once again we'll come over to our Victor Smart Object layer and as you can see that little FX has been placed in uh, to indicate that we have effects on the layer. So you just double click on that and it should bring up the dialog box again and we'll just come down to Bevel in a Boss. So we want a inner bevel, so we want to affect the inside of the shape and we'll keep the technique smooth so it just gives that smooth edge just to like indicate that it's curved. 100% um, depth will work for now. We'll bring the size up of the um, shadows or the effect. Bring it up to about 18. And uh, yeah, we should just keep everything else the same for now. It should work. Cool. So you want to hit OK. So now you can see the effect that has been that has been put on there. So um, works pretty well. So now we're going to add a texture to our bottle cap just to make it look um, a bit rustic, old, kind of used and worn, torn sort of thing. So I've made a um, texture from a photograph, just a photograph of concrete by memory, and just taken out all the color information and everything. Um, I'll provide a little JPEG on my my blogger blog, so uh, people can use that. So pretty much you just want to select all of that by pressing Control A, just copy it, Control C, and then switch back to your bottle cap. And then we'll just hit Control V to paste it in over top. So once the texture is all pasted in, what we want to do is we want to come over to our Vector Smart Object and holding Control, just click once on the layer to make a selection around that edge of that object. This way we'll be able to quickly make a mask that will um, separate the um, texture from what's on top of the bottle cap and what's on top of the background. So basically we'll come over and then we'll click on our texture layer, come down and we'll hit this little quick mask here. And what that does is it uses the selection that is currently in place and puts a mask around, around that selection so it covers anything that's outside of the selection. So now we want to make our bottle cap be seen from underneath this texture. We'll pretty much merge the two together. Um, the easiest way to do that would be to select our texture layer here and come up and we'll hit multiply. 
pretty much what that does it'll multiply the black throughout all the layers below it and anything that is white becomes see-through nice little trick and it's pretty useful to use on a lot of things um, obviously it's a bit dark so we'll come over and we'll get our opacity and we'll drop that down a notch we'll drop it down to probably about 30 I reckon yeah so that looks pretty neat all right so now we want to bring back the highlights that our texture has kind of washed out in the edge here so the um, easiest way we can do that without actually physically uh, removing any of that texture is just to use this uh, vector mask that we've applied to our texture layer here so what you want to do is just click on that mask there, a little black box will come up around it and we want to come over and select our brush tool and just select a small brush size, a feathered brush, one of these little blurry ones All right. and then we want to bring our flow down to something like 25% pretty much bringing the flow down will stop the brush when you use it from using its full strength now the key thing to remember when you're using a vector mask on a layer is that when you paint over something in black it'll take it away and when you paint something over in white it'll bring it back. This is a non-destructive editing technique and it's pretty useful if you expect to make a lot of mistakes and you want to come back and fix things up at a later period. So we'll just bring that brush over and we just paint off the edges where the highlights have been washed out by the texture. This will just bring back our 3D effect and emphasize what we've added on there before also fix up our um, little text here just to take out some of the, the uh, texture so it makes the wording stand out a bit more so you just paint over it I find this is better to use than the erase tool because if you really mess it up you can ultimately just bring it all back rather than relying on your undo history states Cool. And you can make your brush a little bit bigger and we can uh, dumb down the texture around the edge at the top here just to make it a little better. Probably done a bit much there so I'll bring it back in with the um, other colour. If you hit X you can swap between the two colours really easily. Alright, so that's all finished. Um, I hope this has been of some help and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments section below and yeah, have fun.